Hey there everyone, I'm here today with Tattoo to show you how to ride your lateral work under saddle. Um, I chose Tattoo today to show you instead of Bastion just because he has a little bit more of a dynamic movement to him. So it would probably be a little bit easier for you to see what you need to see. And also because he does have a tendency to give me a little bit of a hard time sometimes. So you, I can also kind of um, help you troubleshoot through some things that you might um, find happening to you when you try doing the lateral work with your horse under saddle. So hopefully that you've practiced your groundwork, you've practiced your shoulder in, your haunches in, and your half pass on the ground so that your horse has a little bit of an understanding already what it is that you're going to do so that it sort of eliminates a little bit of the stress and anxiety of learning something new um, with a rider on their back, all right? so. Just like the last lesson, we have a lot to go over, so I'm gonna get started and we'll do some shoulder in and I can hopefully give you some pointers and tips on how to get your shoulder in ridden correctly and um, for you to get the, the right feeling of coordinating your aids uh, so that you can get it done. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna get Tattoo moving along to the left. I'm gonna have nice, short reins and ask Tattoo to be nice and soft in the bridle. You'll notice that's mostly where he has the tendency to give me a hard time. Uh, all right, so I'm riding my 10 meter circle because as you remember from our last lesson, that our shoulder in is the very first step of a 10 meter circle. So I wanna get Tattoo walking around this 10 meter circle. I'm gonna go again because he's a little bit tight on me, but I want him to have a nice steady rhythmical walk. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I want his body bending and taking the shape of the circle before I try my shoulder in. All right, so I'm gonna go back over to where my circle began and I'm gonna start using my inside leg on and off. I'm gonna turn tattoo shoulders one step onto the inside track. And then I'm gonna use my inside leg by the girth and time it with his outside hind coming, I mean his inside hind, sorry, coming off the ground. So as it, his left shoulder comes towards my leg, I can press my leg and ask Tattoo's left hind leg to cross under. I'm gonna do that again on the other side. So we're looking for my leg coordinating with this left hind leg as it comes off the ground, I'm gonna push it down the wall. So I'm gonna turn tattoo shoulders and my shoulders as if I'm about to ride a 10 meter circle. And I'm gonna coordinate my left leg with his left hind leg and come and go, press on and off, on and off. So that I send that left hind leg down the rail. And if I wanted to, I could put both legs on and see tattoo turns on to that 10 meter circle. All right, so I'm just gonna change direction. We'll do it the other way. So I'll ride my 10 meter circle right, making sure that tattoo is being a good boy and following my bending aids and walking at a nice steady rhythm and taking the shape of the 10 meter circle. As I'm finishing my circle, I'm gonna start a little bit coming and going with my inside leg on, off, in rhythm with his inside hind. And then I'm gonna overturn one step onto the 10 meter circle. And then my right leg is gonna to work to keep his right hind leg on the track. So as his left shoulder is all the way back, that's when that right hind leg's coming off the ground. That's when I can press, okay? So you see all the practice that we've been talking about with your timing and understanding where your horse's legs are underneath you starts to really um, become very beneficial for you 
here when you need to do your lateral work. You get a little bit more cross over from the hind legs if you get your timing just right. Now you see that a little bit tattoo has the tendency to want to just keep his shoulders on the track and swing his hind legs off the track. You don't want that, okay? So if you feel like your horse is just swinging their butt towards the wall, then you really need to make sure that you're actually turning the shoulders off the track. So you get that shoulder to the inside track like this and then drive the hind leg down the track. A lot of times, and you'll see this at trot, Tattoo tries to kind of get heavy and take over and his, just his bum goes towards the wall. But it's not a bum out, it's a shoulder in. So we wanna make sure we turn that shoulder to the inside track and drive that hind leg down the track, all right? So if you're having trouble coordinating your steering aids of, dry, or of turning the shoulders off and your leg aid, what I like to tell my students to do is actually start off by turning early and doing a little leg yield over to the wall, right? So you're getting your horse bending in the right position for the shoulder in and you're getting your inside leg working already so that when you get to the track then all you have to do is turn your shoulders a little bit in and your horse's shoulders a little bit in and your legs already sort of in rhythm so we'll do that again over here so like if you're having trouble with the coordination of the aids just get your leg going first your inside leg going first by performing a little shallow leg yield so i want him to yield over so i'm going to press my leg over now now now, when I get to the track, I'm going to turn my shoulders and keep my leg working. Okay, so once you feel like you're good at that, then you can go about doing your shoulder in without that little bit of leg yield. But I find that sometimes that little exercise helps the rider sort of coordinate, get their leg working first, and then their steering aids come in later. So now I'm going to do the shoulder in at the trot, I'll start it off with my 10 meter circle, making sure tattoo is bending nicely. Get a nice tempo, and then I'll come to the track and do one step onto the 10 meter circle. My inside leg by the girth, and I'm using it in time. You see I'm posting to start, so I know that when I'm rising up out of the saddle, tattoo's inside hind leg, is off the ground. So when I rise, I can use my leg. If you have trouble with that, you can sit as well. So I'm using it now, 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 now. A little bit more forward from him. And I'll do it at sitting trot. And even though I'm sitting, I still have to keep track of where his feet are, so my timing is good. I'm gonna put both legs on and actually turn tattoo on to another 10 meter circle. And come out of it. So on off with my leg, turn my shoulders, turn his shoulders into shoulder in. You can change direction. Drive my shoulder in this way. Again, just thinking, good tempo, good bend, one, two, one, two. Both legs on to actually turn them on to the 10 meter circle. And come out of it again, get my left leg working. And again, if you're having trouble coordinating, steering your shoulders off and using your legs, start with the leg heel, on, off, on, on, off with the leg, then turn the shoulder. That's just getting a little easy. Okay. So hopefully that helps you figure out the correct way to perform a shoulder in and gives you a good idea of 
how you can help yourself get better coordinated because there's a lot going on. You have to use your leg in time with your horse's legs and you have to keep your shoulder, your horse's shoulders off the track but at the same time not letting them actually turn onto that 10 meter circle. All right, so our haunch is in is our very last step of a 10 meter circle. Now when I was showing you haunches in with Bastion in the last groundwork lesson, I mentioned that the technical term for haunches in is travers. You also want to mention that there is such a thing called a ranvere, which is just like a haunches in, but it's haunches out instead. So I'm gonna show you both of those things with tattoo. So ranvere and travers are both second level movements in dressage that you are required to show if you're riding a second level test. So first we'll do the travers, the haunches in, which we already know is our last step of a 10 meter circle. So I'm just going to bring Tattoo around, keep his shoulders, head, neck, and shoulders down the track. And I just have my outside leg back. And again, working on, off, on, off, in rhythm with his right hind leg coming off the ground. So now, now, now. So I'm gonna walk over to the other side. I'm gonna ride that 10 meter circle again. So I can show you that as I'm going around the circle and starting to finish the circle, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna bring my outside leg back so that I actually tell his hind end not to finish, okay? So the front end's gonna finish the 10 meter circle and head down the wall. I'm gonna get tattoo going here. And then I'm gonna start to position his head, neck and shoulders down the wall. My outside leg comes back so that I tell his right hind leg don't finish stay over. So my right knee is bending and I'll do this for you as I go by the camera and I'm letting my leg come on and off in rhythm, in time with his right hind leg. So as it's about to come off the ground, I push now, now, now. So I'm going to walk forward and I will ask right in front of the camera for tattoo to swing his haunches in. I'm going to bring his shoulders in. So my right leg comes back. Press now, 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 now. All right, so again, if this is something that you're having a hard time getting your horse to get the right position, one way that I like to teach my students to get it right is to actually perform a bad leg yield, okay? So we all know that our leg yield the hind legs are, the shoulders are supposed to lead, but the hind legs are supposed to keep up. And a lot of times what happens in a bad leg yield is the shoulders lead and the haunches get a little bit left behind. Well, when you get that kind of a leg yield, you actually end up in your haunches in position. So I'm leg yielding tattoo over and see how his shoulders are really far ahead and his haunches stay to the inside. So that when I get to the track, I can just hold his head, neck and shoulders straight on the track but my outside leg keeps his haunches over. So I'll try to show you that coming towards you on the other wall, and then we'll try it at the trot. So people often laugh at me because I tell them to practice a bad leg yield, but only for the purposes of really feeling for yourself how to get the horse positioned and haunches in, and to get your horse actually feeling like they can do it. So I'm starting the leg yield I'm pushing his shoulders over to the wall. And then when I get there, I'm really taking my outside leg back to tell his haunches not to finish that leg yield. And then using my leg again in time with that outside hind and he's got to go. Good. So that's basically kind of a cheat way to start getting your, your haunches in done. And then when you feel pretty good about it, you can try it without the little bit of leg yield. It's important to actually feel that yielding of the shoulders over to the wall for the haunches in, uh, mainly because 
you want to distinguish with your horse the difference between asking him to do a haunches in and a canter. So that's one thing that I like to really emphasize when I ride my horses is that the first thing I'm gonna do is actually move the shoulders towards the wall and then swing the haunches over. So they, they get used to that. It's like I'm moving their shoulders out of the way and they understand that I'm gonna ask them for haunches in and not a canter in that moment, okay? So even if I'm gonna ride right directly through my corner here and go directly into a haunches in, I'm gonna think shoulder over first and then swing the haunches. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trot a little bit. And we'll do them at trot. Again, if you're just learning and you feel better about posting, do it at posting. If you feel more coordinated when you sit, you can do that. So I'm just gonna come over here to V so I can ride a proper 10 meter circle. And then I'm gonna come out of my 10 meter circle in the haunches in. So as I'm close to the end of the circle, bring my left leg back, position tattoo down the track. Notice head, neck, and shoulders are straight down the track. And he's just giving through his rib cage and swinging the hips in. So now I'm just gonna bring his shoulders to the wall keep his haunches from finishing the corner and go down the wall. All right, so if I were doing this and I were having a hard time getting the bend in the position I wanted, I would turn tattoo a little early, start the leg yield, bring the outside leg back so the hind legs don't finish that leg yield. Of course, you want to make sure, a little disclaimer, after you finish practicing your bad leg yields, please go back and practice your good ones <laughs> so you don't lose that. Good. Just practicing those bad leg yields for the sake of getting a good idea of how to get your horse into that haunches in position. Moving the shoulders to the wall and then bringing your outside leg back. Now the opposite would be true for our Ranvair I mentioned. I'm gonna perform a Ranvair for you. So if I'm tracking left and I want a Ranvair, I actually have to come a little to the inside track and I'm gonna bend the opposite direction of travel and swing tattoos haunches to the track. And then I go forward and straight. So it's basically the same thing, but it's the opposite. It's haunches out instead of haunches in. So when I ask Tattoo to do the round there, I'm gonna slide his shoulders over to the inside track and then out my inside leg pushes his hip over to the track. Okay, so that's your round there. Traver and round there. Remember Traver is haunches in Ranvair is haunches out. All right, so hopefully that was a good demonstration for you. You got a good sense of how I'm using my legs and how I'm using my, my hands to explain to Tattoo where I want his shoulders and where I want his hips. So if you can do your Traver, your haunches in, you can do a half pass. And you don't have to have a fancy, expensive dressage horse to do all of these movements, okay? As long as your horse is healthy and sound, you can teach them to do all of these movements and you can learn to do them correctly and proficiently. And even if you wanted to show your horse second and third level, you would be able to do that, okay? And and get some scores if you wanted to earn your USDF bronze medal. Just because you don't have an expensive fancy dressage horse doesn't mean you can't accomplish a goal like that. I had a student once that was a very hard worker. She, her parents very generously bought her a cute little five-year-old quarter horse that she proceeded to teach all of training level, first level, second level, and third level movements right up the line 
over the course of probably about three years, and she earned her bronze medal on that cute little quarter horse that was not built for dressage, but she was sound and very agreeable to learning, and they got that job done. So please don't be discouraged if, if you don't have Mr. Fancy Pants, right? All right, so I'm gonna show you your half pass now. So the best way to start teaching yourself and your horse a half pass is to go from the center line towards the wall. The horses always generally want to be over here on the track. So when you are doing lateral work, it's usually easier to start going from the inside to the outside. And I'm gonna use these poles again, just like I did with fashion and the groundwork. And I'm gonna turn tattoo towards the center line. And then I'm gonna take one step over the center line. So he's in a more of a shoulder in position. And then I'm gonna position his head, neck and shoulders towards the track. And then I'm going to do my travers over to the wall. So if you see, I'm keeping his shoulders a little bit left. And my leg is working in rhythm with his left hind leg. And we half pass over to the wall. And we'll do that on the other side. And you can do, I only have one little pole there, but if you feel like you need more poles on the ground going all the way towards the track to help you visually, get the right idea, then go ahead and do that. Because what I want you to think of for your half pass from the center line towards the wall is that, that you have an imaginary wall. Like I'm gonna do my half pass left now, so I wanna pretend that I have this imaginary wall on the right side of me. So I'm gonna turn the center line over, step the center line so tattoos pointed at the track, and then I'm gonna bring his shoulders a little bit over to that imaginary wall, just like I was going straight down the track. And then, so his shoulders are traveling on that diagonal line, and then I'm asking his right hind leg to go under, 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 and I'm gonna finish it, make sure his right hind leg's all the way on the track, and then go straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that at trot. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So. I'm gonna trot and I'm gonna turn down my center line. So when I half pass right, I want to imagine that there's a wall on the left side of me so I can bring his shoulders over to that imaginary wall. So I'm going to my center line, overturning it. Now his shoulders positioned over to my imaginary wall on the left side. Come on, tattoo, over, over, over over, 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 make sure he finishes. I'm gonna get him going a little bit so he gives you a better looking half pass. Come on, buddy. So bending him, half 10 meter circle towards my center line. Turn his shoulders onto that diagonal line. Bend the shoulders a little to the towards my imaginary wall and get that to get that right hind leg to cross under. Okay, one more time. So half circle, 10 meters right to get the bend and the tempo I want. Tiny bit overturn that center line, then bring the shoulders over to my imaginary wall. Come on, Tati, go. Half pass. I wanna make sure I finish. Left hind leg on the track. Okay. And then once you feel good about that, then you can try your half pass from the wall towards the center line. Come through my corner, use my corner to get that 10 meter bend I want, overturn, point them at the center line, and come towards you, you on the center line. Good. 
and then forward and straight. Always making sure that those hind legs make it all the way over to the line that you're riding to. Over. See if we can make it through here. Good. <laughs> okay. So that's your half pass, your shoulder in, your ranvair and travers, and your half pass. Hopefully I gave you some good tips that make sense to you so that you can practice those and get a good idea of how to perform those correctly. Um, I do still have to give you your challenge. So your challenge today is the same one that you had for your groundwork class. We're gonna try to turn on the haunches, which again is basically just Think of your half passing aids almost, but as you're turning. Okay. This was always something that was mine and Tattoo's nemesis when we were earning our bronze and silver medal. And part of the reason is because Tattoo has a tendency to get very heavy on the shoulders. He has a tendency to really want to try to always take over everything that we're doing. And so I took a long time to figure out how to coordinate my aids to keep his shoulders up and light and to keep those hind legs marching in the direction I want. So we'll see if I can perform a good turn on the haunches for you, okay? So I'm actually gonna try our hard way first. But what I want you to think about is you're, you're gonna before you attempt the turn, you're gonna make sure that your horse's hind legs are coming with you. And that you can see how he already wants to fall on the forehand and swing his right hind leg out. And so I had to stop him and get his shoulders back light again. I'm just gonna keep going and then forward. So as long as Tattoo is moving along for me and his shoulders are light, I can control those hind legs and turn him without him stepping out or sticking a foot, okay? So that's the hard part about getting a turn on the haunches done is not letting the outside hind leg step out and not letting the inside hind leg stick okay, and, and miss a step. So as I mentioned in the groundwork class, we wanna keep these two legs back here marching in rhythm with the walk. So when I approach my turn, I'm gonna bring his haunches in a little as I'm turning him. So think it's a little bit cheating, but at first you can do a little bit of haunches in and then start turning the shoulders. You wanna see he wants to get heavy and step out, you wanna to progress to the point where you can start turning the shoulders and swing the haunches in all at the same time. But again, that takes a lot of practice and coordination. So when you're first starting, you could try walking and then getting that haunches in first and then start to turn the shoulders. And you don't even have to do a full you know, a full turn, maybe just do a quarter turn, just make a square, go forward and straight. And then I'm gonna swing his haunches in and then turn his shoulders more of around a right angle turn and make a square. So if at first you're having a little bit of trouble, just break it down a little bit. And then when you feel good, maybe try a few more steps and everything keeps moving. So one thing too that you can look at to help you a little bit is making sure the two shoulders keep moving one, two, one, two out in front of you and that the shoulders don't get stuck. So I'm going to just try a quarter turn here and then forward. You see Tattoo likes to get heavy with his shoulders and take over. So I have to try to coordinate my direction aids with my balancing and then turn and forward and now I'm going to try a full come on tattoo full turn looking at those shoulders moving forward keep that hind leg under good <laughs> so 
that's a hard one. Takes a lot of practice. Um, keep trying, don't give up. Like I said, as long as your horse is healthy and sound, you can learn this stuff. It may take you a little longer, maybe not. Um, you know, just, just keep, keep trying and, um, and keep practicing until you feel like you've got it because doing your lateral work is really good exercise for your horse. It helps them develop uh, more balance. It's good fitness work for them so that um, you also, with your lateral work, you're now moving in to that training phase of collection, getting more collection, which is the next step on our training scale. So we want some collection and some self-carriage. So this lateral work is really good exercise for them to get to that point. Okay, so I'm hopeful that that lesson was helpful to you. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share with a friend. And as I mentioned before, please hit that subscribe button on my channel. And you can head on over to my website for the notes on this lesson if you like reading as well as watching. And I hope you have a great ride. Thanks for watching.